There it is. Woo! All right. Okay. So, uh. Um, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've been I've been avoiding saying it just for that bit right there. So. <laughs> All right. What's the way? <laughs> All right, everybody. So, um, I'll go ahead and let you uh, take the floor and um, go ahead and say what you have to say, and then we can start and just get into talking. All right. Well, I mean, there's. I guess, uh, you know, my new album's out today. It's obviously my birthday. You just gave me a, a nice little celebration. <laughs> and uh, Gummy is my 14th album. And if I scoop back, you can see where it goes in the discography shirt. Yeah. Uh, Mission Man, that's my website. If you guys haven't, aren't familiar with me, and if you are, uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll let you know that anyone who watches my streams definitely knows who you are. Actually, a lot of, like, the things I wanted to just to discuss with you and stuff and like like especially the part where you said that you get a lot of like harsh comments and stuff like that but it doesn't bother you and i think that is something that a lot of people should uh like take in and really like you know uh, i can't even find the words to really say it but i think you i think you really do it in such a fascinating way and because you've done it you've done these amazing things like i saw that your your music got played on jimmy fallon because it got played on jimmy fallon you were able to get uh on the, on the top 20 or what was it top 30 chart with uh yeah i, I was number 23 on the denmark itunes hip-hop chart <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like that and that is so wild and it all just came from being uh like having that tenacity that you have keep going back at it and and it's and you know taking everything with stride and like the, those types of things is one of the big reasons why i wanted to reach out and talk with you is because i think that um anybody and everybody whether it's music or whether it's anything in their life that they can learn a lot from it and i think that i think you could probably explain it the best to us so <laughs> yeah well i mean with with music especially um I, it's probably true for just about anything with entrepreneurs uh you're gonna get so much rejection that you just have to be able to accept it because it's it's not like i booked this tour in 2003 where i sent out 200 physical demos this is, you know, well before the internet, just sending CDs out. And I booked nine shows out of those 200 demos. Right. So it's a 95, that's a 95% rejection rate. But more importantly, it's a 4% acceptance rate, four right. and a half, you know. And so that's how you had to look at it. You, you, you can either have it kind of weigh down on you and just be like crippling because there is a lot of negative feedback. Um, but they are, are extremely, like, there's just amazing feedback as well. Like, I've had uh, somebody tell me that he met his future wife at one of my house shows in Athens, <laughs> Ohio, and they're still married now. Like, it's just amazing little things like that uh, that add up to just tremendous big things along the way. Yeah. And it's all because you have to just, you know, take the acceptance and kind of push out all the bad feedback. Yeah, and I think that's, like... And like, like I said, I think anybody can learn from that. And it's, I don't know, it's just super amazing to hear that. And it's, uh, so it kind of leads me into like how I found you actually. So there was an ad that um, I came across, which I have found you and a couple other musicians just clicking on random ads and stuff like that. But the ad that I saw from you was this one that says, uh, you are extra amazing. It's four seconds long. I'll just play it really fast. Just a quick reminder, you are extra amazing. And that was it that was all you said is just hey, just quick minor you're extra amazing and i was just i was genuinely baffled and confused and i was like what is he trying to sell me like i, I just, like, my brain went to what is this guy like what is he doing huh what's his whole channel about so i clicked on your channel and realized you did music and just kind of deep dove on you and just uh yeah and after that i just learned so much about you and stuff and it's now i got you here so <laughs> And yeah, I mean, that's a natural reaction. You're seeing an ad. Obviously, there's got to be something there, right? So right. I'm like, either somebody's going to watch that and they're just going to feel better about their day, or they're going to ignore it as an ad, or they're going to go check out my stuff. But even if they don't check out my stuff, I've still made a positive impact on somebody's day. So that's why it was money well spent to yeah. me, even if they never check out my stuff, because I'm making a positive impact. And that's part of why I make music. That's a, uh, well, I mean, it made a lasting impression with me. So. <laughs> But uh, I wanted to ask uh, if you if you don't mind if you feel uncomfortable by all means. But um, like uh, what kind of like what, like what did that cost you and stuff to do just a quick ad like that? And does it go by like the seconds or how does that whole thing work? 
Um, so with YouTube, it depends on what kind of ad I'm running. So you can do the skippable ads and non-skippable ads. Uh, but on average, uh, I think at that point when I was doing that ad, it was anywhere between one and two cents every time somebody watched it. Okay. So, you know, depending on how much I bid for the day, uh, you know, sometimes I was spending 10 bucks a day. Sometimes it was a dollar. Um, and then, you know, I turn it off every once in a while because I only have so much money to do it. But, right, right. Yeah. Well, if uh, if you had it on the day I watched it, you probably got like 10 cents off me at least. <laughs> so um, let me see. I had some questions ready for you too. Um, yep. So there was the Ed. Um, oh yeah, there was uh, something that I saw in, in one of your videos and uh, it's that you put your pants on two legs at a time. You, you care to comment on that? There's, there's always there's just a saying that you know i put my le pants on one leg at one leg at a time it's just like everybody else and they tell me, every time i see that i'm like i just put them on both at once i mean like sometimes <laughs> i put them on one at a time but i i will sit at the edge of my bed and just pull them both up at the same time and and, and the point is that i i think with that is it's funny yes especially in that video format but it's also playing on the idea that you know what, what is normal anyway like is it normal to put on one leg at a time is it normal to put on two does it really matter we're all doing the same thing just in different ways i guess <laughs> you know it's just things that unite us as opposed to weird sayings yeah um when you were uh so i mentioned earlier that you started back in uh the early 90s right yeah i started rapping in 1992. 1992 i was i was two <laughs> <laughs> I, I was i was a little more than two i was i was 13 you know oh, enough okay. that i could talk <laughs> <laughs> uh so and you had also made a statement uh i had gone through and read something like your um like a little bit about your bios and everything else and in in a couple of spots that you said that you started in like uh, what was it, like 98 you started doing like actual production and stuff or yeah so my uh musical kind of growth there started off my first album was just me and um i was using a keyboard as as a beat machine essentially i was just pressing play and changing chord structure and stuff like that right but there was one day when i was trying to record a friend of mine uh, on my sound blaster live card this is how bad this technology was and he was trying to play guitar on it and um it wasn't working and i'm like well it works fine for what i do and he goes well it may work for me it may work for what you do but it doesn't work for music <laughs> and at that point, I'm just like, wow, that is like the most ruthless, hardcore thing I think anybody has said to me up to that point. And then I started thinking about it. Like, you know, there are limitations to just using the keyboard as a beat machine. I should learn how to play my own instruments. And so there are several albums that I have that are almost impossible to get a hold of now because they were um, learning experiments, essentially. You know, I was playing the bass, the guitar, the keyboard, but I was all self-taught and it's it's terrible production a lot of it's just completely out of time um so there were like three albums where it kind of went backwards in order to go forwards because of that moment i i mean i have to hear it one of these days you and i can go offline one of these days you're gonna have to show me though man it's so like i love seeing the whole progression of everything <laughs> but um so what what programs then did you start with so if you started like going into the actual production away from keyboards and stuff what programs were out in the 90s I can't even remember what I used with the Sound Blaster Live card because uh, that was like 1999, and I think it was whatever was just included with Windows at the time. Okay. Um, but the first one that I bought was I bought a an M Delta uh, eight track kind of external sound card, and it came with uh, Vegas by Sonic Foundry at the time. Okay. Uh, they've been bought out by somebody now. I don't know if it's Adobe or somebody else. Somebody bought Vegas at some point. Sony. You're maybe. talking um, Sony uh, Vegas, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that was that was Vegas 1.0. I don't know what version they're on now, but <laughs> that's that's what I was with for a long time, and I kept that until my desktop died, and I switched over to start recording in laptops. Okay. And uh, switched over to Reaper which is what i still use now okay because i was actually going to ask that as well because i i kind of seen it in the background of videos and i personally uh do music myself as well and i um i uh <laughs> i get a little flabbergasted sometimes um but yeah i personally use logic pro x because i'm on a mac for music and then um right now i'm on a pc for streaming so i had to go through this long laborious process of figuring out how i can have my mac connected to a pc which you're not supposed to do but i figured it out and it, it's it was like a half a year of just pain and i'm still kind of still working on it <laughs> yeah. but uh so 
uh about your instruments because i got really confused when i saw your album cover you you said oh yeah it's my bass and i was like that's your guitar it's six strings and then i realized you have a six string bass what was the uh yeah, what what was the reasoning behind getting a six string over just a normal four or even possibly just like a five so i actually i had the four string oh it's out of sight of the thing but i've, I've had a four string for 20 years or so my dad gave it to me around the same time he gave me my guitar in 1999 um this guitar here. Oh, nice. And I used that four string uh, up until probably three years ago. And my my dad actually passed away in February of 2018. Oh, sorry to hear and, that. And um, one of the things that he still had in his house um, was that six string bass. And like, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd see, I, I knew when he bought it, like he even mentioned he bought it. Yeah. And uh, I, I knew it's something that he'd want me to have. So I took that and started using it. And I mean, I, I love the sound of it. I still basically use it as a four string, right. uh, using the same notes that I did on the four string, but it's, it's got a much better sound to me than the, the Music Master short, short, short scale that I had. Um, so that's the reasoning now behind that six string. Okay. And uh, you said your dad had it for how long? Uh, he only bought it maybe two years before he passed. Okay. So it was just something that he wanted. That he he played bass uh, in a band starting back at, in high school, I think, maybe even in college. Uh, and he did a bunch of cover band stuff, um, you know, playing like Louie Louie and, and things like that. Uh, so he'd been a bass player for a long time, and he just wanted a, a nice six-string oh, um, nice. later on. Okay. And um, so did you get inspired with music through your dad then or mom as well oh. or – the way I remember it, when I started rapping, I don't remember even realizing that my dad was a musician it's because <laughs> most of that stuff that he did, most of the music stuff that he did was before we were born. You know, once you have kids, a lot of times the equation changes and yeah, you kind of have to, yeah, you choose, you choose the career that allows you to raise your kids as opposed to, you know, choosing the, the music career if, if it comes to that sometimes. So if you're lucky, you can get both, but a lot of times you do have to make that choice. And so, you know. Yeah. Music was still a hobby of his, but I don't think it was something that I was really aware of until several years after I started making music myself. So you, you mentioned about having the separation sometimes, like once you have a kid, you kind of have to stop and stuff like that. Did you make it a, like a sole choice to not like pursue a family so you could pursue music or? Oh, it's been more like I do want to get married and have kids, but I also kind of need some financial stability to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, and with uh, the way and, the world's going it's crazier every day so <laughs> yeah and, and music is a very challenging field to make that happen in um definitely and you know so it's it it's possible i just haven't gotten to that point yet and if i have to make that choice you know i'll make it later on but i think i'd still at least choose to continue making music even if I kind of give up on the idea of making a living from it, right. which it's still in my mind. That's still, you know, number one, what I want to do is make a living from it. Um, okay. Uh, let me pull up some, uh, some of the questions again. Um, oh, <laughs> so I was watching one of your other videos. This one cracks me up. I was watching your unboxing video actually. And I noticed that you have a keychain that you, you used your uh, quarter inch jack on your keys to to uh cut open the box yes so my, my niece for christmas got me it's a little marshall half stack looking thing okay that ha you you act the way you hang it up as a, as a key holder is actually with that quarter inch and it plugs oh. in and there's actual resistance just like you're plugging into an amp so that that plugs in there to keep my keys I know that makes to put my keys. so much more sense because we were just like did he just take that off of like uh off of a um, you know a line in cable and just <laughs> like, okay that's awesome they're magic keys they're, they're, they're keys that plug into the amp and i just play the keys yeah you, you just know. you fiddle the keys around and cool <laughs> solos come from it <laughs> okay um so uh let's see oh yeah some i'm just gonna say oh yeah each time i see this right so uh what is the you you did a kickstarter i believe for this album correct yes what is what is because i wasn't able to see the kickstarter or anything like that uh were you like what is it that the kickstarter actually supports within the album and stuff 
That mainly paid for the CD manufacturing because I, I got 50 copies of the physical CD made and it cost me a couple hundred bucks plus shipping and then okay. the cost of actually shipping those CDs out to people. Okay. Okay. You have more CDs, right? Yeah, I, I, okay. I got those 50 made and sent out about 10. So I still have about 40. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <'Cause>, um, <laughs> I'm, getting me a, I'm getting me a signed uh, Mission Man CD. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but um, let's see what else. So uh let's see and then we've already talked about your equipment and then oh yeah i wanted to ask you about your shirt so uh as well i'm going to be getting a shirt from you tonight and uh it's the it's your basketball t-shirt design and it's it's got a symbol on it and i thought the symbol was super cool and it's the reason why i'm leaning towards that one so if you want to explain like where and also i believe you make all your own like uh all your own symbols and everything and all your own graphics right I do a lot of my own stuff. I, I used to actually hard code my website. Now I'm on Banzoogle, so I just kind of like do it quickly. But okay. that particular one uh, was well beyond any graphic design ability I had. So that was a friend of mine's husband, who is now also a friend of mine. Um, I paid him to do that logo. But that logo is M squared, um, or actually mu squared, the Greek letter M. Right. Um, with a Mobius strip wrapped around it, and then you know, Mission Man on the on the sash or the Mobius strip, however you want to look at it. Uh, and the M squared is for Mission Man. The backstory to the Mission Man's being M squared is that somebody at work said he used to call a friend of his uh, S squared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's where they just popped in. I was just like, oh, uh, M squared. Okay, that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll use that. I like it. Um, I was uh, watching a, a, one of your older blogs that you were talking in, and you had mentioned you only had uh, 534 subscribers, and that was back in 2020. And uh, currently you have 2.21K, and, uh, yeah. and, uh, which is almost quadruple from 2020. So... It looks like you're getting a lot more like reception nowadays than than it was before. Uh, and even in the blog, you were you were um, what was it? In the blog though, you were wanting to get to 1,000 subs by the end of the, end of the year. And I was yeah, I was actually really curious about that. In 2020, did you get to your 1,000 at the end of the year? I I think I hit it a little bit in 2021. I think it was around March or April when I actually hit that that thousand subs. Okay. Um, but it's that's off the top of my head. It's possible I hit it by the end of the year, but my memory is it is you know March about ten months ago, yeah. and then uh, and then I hit the two thousand subscribers and the, the watch hour time to get monetized like June of two thousand two thousand twenty one. So. Okay. Okay. And then uh, so uh, there's quotes that I had found from like from your um. Right. Oh, awesome! Thank you so much, Abby. Applause for him. So one of my friends just uh, rated us with 18 viewers. So for everyone that is new here, this is Mission Man. Mission Man has been making music since the 90s and he's been on YouTube right. and we're getting rated by another one of my friends for 12 people. So that's, thank you guys so much for inviting people in. If you guys have not, um, can someone please post all of his links in the chat, please? Um, I shouldn't, I am and then go support him he just released his album today and thank you dp hey steph how are you doing <laughs> thanks shane okay so uh some of the quotes that you'd said so um I, and I, this is one of my favorite ones you said Last year, I took my first overseas trip. The longest flight I had ever been on before was probably three hours from Ohio to Phoenix. This one was 13. I decided to officially become uh, international and look for an open mic in Tokyo. I love that you used the term that like you decided. And I mean, and like I was saying in the beginning, it is just about being like having that tenacity and going out. And you, um, you go on to say, before I left, I searched online with no luck, primarily because I can't read or speak Japanese. I posted on Facebook that I was looking for an open mic in Japan and a fan of mine who saw me per perform in Dayton, Ohio, and is currently living in Tokyo, told me about the Cosmos Cafe, and it's owned by a woman from Cleveland. Two people who saw me perform there had also seen me perform in Columbus, Ohio. And that is amazing to me that uh, you ended it. And I think that is so, like, almost unfathomable in a sense that these people from all the way in the States happen to see you out there and stuff. And that is so awesome. Just like 
like I said, just putting yourself out there, you can really get a lot back from it. Yeah. And that, that moment where I, I actually got that re feedback too, I was like, wow, that's, it's amazing how that works. Like I just asked and all this magic happened. And uh, when I actually went to that open mic in Tokyo, two people came to see me um, and they had seen me perform in Columbus, Ohio, uh, a couple of years before. So, you know, seeing me ac entirely across the globe uh, is really about as far apart as you can get and still be on the same planet. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, um, that, that's like one of the greatest things that I like, I enjoy so much about finding you was the fact that I was, there's so many layers to you. There's so much to you. It cracks me up there. It, it went from just like you being such a positive person and that I think like is such a fresh relief online compared to everybody else to you were on the, the tonight show to the Japan, like, and then all your blogs. And I love that it, it's the greatest part too, is I can find it all still. I can still go back and read this. You've kept these like journal entries almost. And it's, so, it's, it's so amazing to me. So, um, in, Going to your album that was actually released today, uh, number seven, Unreal Like a Dream is harder to define as I rap for about one minute, and the rest of the time, it's just music. I dreamt the guitar part and built the rest of the song around that guitar part. The lyrics are about the rest of that same dream. What was that dream? <laughs> uh, the, the lyrics really kind of describe the dream about as well as I can remember it. I was just there, and I was, I was playing guitar. It was... In, in the dream, it was actually this guitar that I was playing. And I don't remember the exact part now, but it was something where I was definitely had my, my fingers on these strings and I was sliding down. And the amazing part is when I woke up and recorded that, my finger positioning was almost exactly the same on the guitar when I recorded it as it was in my dream. And the reason that's so amazing to me is because I'm not classically trained. Right. So, like, I don't know what... I don't know the notes that I'm playing. I don't know the chords that I'm playing, but apparently I've heard them enough that I, I could even visualize the, the finger picking position that I had. Um, and then, yeah, it was just kind of the, the rest of the dreams a little hazy at this point. Cause it's been a while, but it's, uh, you know, it just, it was raining at one point and I just saw some random people staring at me. And so I just wrote down what I could remember of the dream in lyric form. And I, ah, oh God. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's just like a, your positive attitude is so contagious. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, I, I wanted to ask about like your process of making music and stuff. Cause as you said, you, you don't under like, I'm guessing you, do you not understand theory at all? Or you don't understand theory? You don't, or how does oh, that? In the last couple, in the last couple of years, I've learned a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. um, like I use, actually used an app called Musician, which okay. knows what notes you're playing. It can actually understand what notes you're playing. And so I would do something like, Oh, I do that. I just didn't know what it was called because the right. way I learned guitar was I would just randomly, okay, what happens if I do this with my fingers or if I bend this string or if I hit these together, or if I do whatever. Um, and all those things had terms. I just didn't know them. The, you know, the scales have certain ways that, you know, that most of these are supposed to be played in the scale and this pattern. And it's like, oh, so I'm technically learning something that I kind of knew, kind of didn't. I still have to like look stuff up if yeah. I'm looking at notes and stuff like that um so i have some idea on the music theory now but because of the way i developed it doesn't really dominate the way i, I make music right. um you know usually i'll just start humming something or i'll just sit down and just start playing and then I, i'll i like what i hear and then i just keep repeating that and i record that whether it's on the guitar first or the bass first or the keyboard first uh, and then build the rest of the song around whatever instrument i started on okay and um Let's see. There was a, there was actually, so there was a video that I wanted to show you. Um, uh, are you going to be able to see it through the, uh, the stream or am I going to be able to send it to you? We can, we can try. I can try to open up Twitch on my phone. You can try to set, put it here on the, on the uh, server here and see if I can see it on my end without it lagging too much. Yeah, you should, um, you should be able to do that. I can mute you so that people, um, that people won't hear it coming in. So. Okay. But yeah, you go ahead and uh, start that up. And I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to show you a couple of videos. So there was a, a song that I had actually done that a lot of my chat has consistently brought up. And it's, it's not that they're, how do I say this probably? It's not that they're making fun of me, but it's a uh, very iconic to them, I guess is a better way to say it. So I had wrote this song for class at one point and there's, um, 
<laughs> as if you see chat someone's already said it bottom right shaggy so uh bottom right shaggy has got has got some groove on him where is it at there it is so yeah bottom right shaggy has some groove on him and um i noticed that in your video you had top right mission man Talented. You're grooving up here, and um, it's just so now it's become it's oh, become this ongoing this ongoing thing that you it's are. Ongoing, <laughs> this ongoing thing. So it's become okay. now this ongoing joke that um, there's there's bottom right Shaggy, and then now there's top right Mission Man, and <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> I thought that was one of the greatest things ever. Is I, it was before I saw that video, I decided to make it in this manner. The joke came around. And then we found you and saw that video and I was like, yes, he did it like I did it. Like... So, <laughs> so that was uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you. And then um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was um, your friend Hen Henrique Co Coudo. I don't want to say his name incorrectly. Hendrik Kudo. So, so he was your director, right? For playing a little basketball, yes. Yeah. How well do you know him? Um, so like, I, I'm not super close to him, but I met him, I guess, uh, in like 2005 ish when I played at elbows and chins in Dayton, Ohio. And he was making music at the time. He wasn't a full-time, uh, movie maker yet. And then I didn't see him for years. And then I saw him again at, at an open mic at uh, South park tavern in Dayton, Ohio. And we kind of caught up and then like, we kept dibs on each other's career you know kept tabs on each other's careers and i watched him become a full-time filmmaker and he continued to you know develop watch my music career take off or Cause, develop because i have a theory that he's under disguise it's justin wang in disguise <laughs> if, you, if you see the picture here i'm gonna send you the picture so you can see this <laughs> because they look so similar i love his style though the guy needs to keep rocking that style <laughs> you know I'll shoot you a picture really fast. <laughs> Does that not look almost just like him? Like they're like twins. So I, you might want to. I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have to confront him on this. I'm gonna have to see, but I had to do it carefully. You know, it's got to be in a public place, right? Because cause... if he's that good at, at disguising <laughs> and having a double identity, who knows what else is going on? You know, he's got a couple of passports. Uh, you know, it doesn't even know his real name anymore. So I got to make sure that I'm doing this in a public place when it happens. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that is too good. That was, oh man, that's too good. Man, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of the main things I wanted to really cover. And I also wanted to ask a little bit about uh, playing a little bit, uh, playing a little, uh, playing a little basketball. Um, Cause <laughs> you have like 15 people with you here and for me, I I hardly know 15 people online, let alone near me to do a video with me. Like, how did that go about? How were you able to get um, the whole group together and stuff for that? So that was, I actually, if you could call me a, a producer at that point, that was my only casting call. If you've, I mean, you've watched a bunch of my videos, you, you know that most of my official music videos, it's just me. Like I'm leaving the camera stationary and doing whatever, and then doing all the editing. Um, for that, because I didn't want a video of me just shooting layups and shooting three pointers and like <laughs> grabbing at the time, I decided that I needed a director for the video and I needed to put a team together. And so I I put together like a Facebook event and said, hey, um, you know, come out and and join this. And I got I had seven people confirmed like two days before the shoot was supposed to happen and i finally got the three others to confirm otherwise it would have been a three on three video which you know we could have done uh and ultimately i ended up with like two more people so i ended up having a ref and then just a, a friend that was just sitting on the on, on the sideline obviously just not paying attention to anything yeah. playing on his phone while we were playing the game um but yeah this is all through a, a, a facebook event and it ended up being um three of the people were in a group called counterfeit money machine uh, and then um, another one is in a group called Dipspit, and Dipspit's a, a Dayton-based band, and Counterfeit Money Machines a Cincinnati-based band, and we had all kind of performed together in some way or another uh, at shows, and so it ended up being just kind of like three bands getting together, and then a couple other fans in there as well.
can can you explain what that is date date space what was it oh, dip spit dip spit uh yes <laughs> i'm not sure i mean i know what dip spit is i don't know exactly how they decided upon that name but uh it's just two guys chatham and lane that uh make oh and and greg schultz who's known as the conga ninja in the group because he just really does just play the conga drums um but you know the the lead vocalist raps and plays guitar and then his friend also uh raps a little bit and they've got a lot of a, a, a hype kind of show going on like i've done a couple shows with them where they had a flag that they were just running around in a circle like it was a, a wrestling event because they're they're all big wrestling fans yeah they go they go out and watch the local wrestling up there in dayton oh and, nice and so there's a, a bit of a wrestling theme going on when they're doing their shows yeah i used to have buddies that were really into the um what, what was it called the Ah, oh, I can't think. I want to say like NXT. Was that the name? I'm not that big of a wrestling, wrestling fan to know. Okay. Guy myself. <laughs> like, I, I know WWE, which used to be WWF, and uh, the, then WCW. And that's, yeah, okay. Um, that's my alphabet soup for <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> Those are all the letters I know for wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, a, a lot of people want to know in the chat about your um about uh, like uh, your new album. They want to know about like your favorite song, the process, how we continue to find musical inspiration thirty years in, and stuff like that. And that was actually a question I had for you too. Was um you 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 really approach your music in such a positive manner? And like for me, I'm a big metalhead, so like metal music really is usually like raw negativity type stuff and. I don't like I don't listen to it and feel negative. I still feel positive hearing it and like I, I enjoy it and stuff. With your music, it's genuinely happy from what I've gathered. It's uh yeah, you care to comment? <laughs> yeah, both of us genuinely happy and, and I mean I you know, I I've gone through phases like I, I've listened to Nine Inch Nails and Rage Against the Machine and Tool in the in the nineties and the early two thousands, even list, listened to a little bit of Megadeth. And so like for me, when I was listening to the metal, it was more about appreciating the music because the music is extraordinarily complex. Um, when, when you get into these double bass drums and the guitar riffs that are based on classical music a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> but at some point um, I stopped I stopped listening almost all together like i still listen occasionally but it's i think i just wanted to have less aggression in my music but i also understand that the, the aggression in the music doesn't necessarily mean the person listening to it is going to be more aggressive right they can easily just appreciate the song for the song but for me i just want to make positive music for the most part and then uh, there are other times where i have serious things to deal with like the uh, even on the new album um living in my memories was about uh, the whole COVID thing of I moved to a new city six months before coronavirus hit. And so I was, I basically didn't hug anybody for seven months. And that song was me kind of dealing with uh, that level of loneliness. But I, once I got out of that, it allowed me to get back into the songs that I wanted to make. But those songs I think are still important to make, um, not just for me therapeutically, but to have them on the album so that, you know, once you, once you feel that you can experience why I come out of that into the, into the happier places. Okay. So then what um what would uh your favorite song on the new album be and what do you think the happier ones would be and what do you think the more serious ones are? So uh the more serious ones I think are the ones that we've already mentioned, the Unreal Like a Dream, even though it's a little obscure and abstract, there's a, a little bit more of serious feel to it. The uh, Living in My Memories obviously is gonna be the most serious one. That one's almost like a, a dark wave track. Um and then my favorite is track nine because couldn't have made that song more than six months ago. Like there's musically, I would not have been able to do it uh, because it's in nine, four time with a bass line that starts on two and this musically complex enough that I wouldn't have been able to do it. And, and the weird thing about making that song actually is I played the bass line and I recorded the bass line. Um, and that's one of the few times where I just recorded like nine measures of it and then looped it. Uh, most of the time I will play something all the way through the entire song. All right. But, it wasn't until I was trying to record the drums and I'm like, I'm playing this, I'm playing the drums right. Why is there still more music happening at the end here? So I had to really listen to be like, oh, that's a, that last measure is actually six beats instead of four. Right. It's like four beats of four, four beats of four, four beats of four, and then a beat of six. And then, you know, I looped on from there and started over again. So that's where the nine, nine, four time signature comes in. But 
um, it's also, you know, it's still, even with that complexity, it's still an energetic song. It's still like, I listen to it and get pumped up and you, you can listen to it almost like it's a four, four song. Just like if, if you don't know music, you just be like, Oh, this is still just a normal, a somewhat normal song. Uh, and has a lot of energy and, and has lyrics that you can relate to quickly, but also has so many, uh, metaphors and stuff going on with it that you'll get something new each time that you listen to it so i think the com the, the combination of all those things makes that song my favorite the mo most positive ones probably are um hominin for haha <laughs> it's just a fun song with a bunch of it's just a very punny song really like there's a, there's a lot of play on words in there i had to go uh, look even... up what hominin meant so. <laughs> 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 yes, a lot of times I'll say hominin for haha, and people will give me a synonym for haha. I'm like, no, no. A hominin for haha is actually a synonym for sounds like fun. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the actual play on words, with, even within the, the title of the song. That's the play on word. And, uh, you know, I, I talk at one point, I'm like, I, I, I just listened to a Doja Cat song, and it, it made me laugh so hard I hurt my calf. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you know the song, Moo. It's a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a meme song. Okay. But <laughs> um Yeah, so that's that's the probably the most positive one on there is, is Hominin for Haha. -ha. Okay. And then um so what is the what is the the future hold for this album? Are you gonna be touring on it or so right now that's still a little up in the air. I'm focused a lot on the digital side of things, uh, trying to grow the fan base a bit more, uh, but I do still plan on going on tour in April or May. I just had to kind of figure out the dates if that makes sense. And I definitely want to hit Ohio where I know I have some existing fan base. So Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus, uh, probably Athens, Ohio. Uh, if I can pull it off, Oxford, Ohio, it's a little complicated because it's a college town. It's the one I grew up in, but okay. it's, it should have a great music scene. But it doesn't because most of the bars there are cover bands instead of uh, original, or they do DJs. Um, so those those five I definitely want to hit. And then if the you know, if the numbers are saying, "Hey, I now have this many fans along this place," I'll try to get that booked in as well. Well, if you ever stop by Arizona, like I said, I'll be I'll be there front and center. So, <laughs> but um, well, with that said, so with like you've already toured before that you've mentioned and such, and um. You, that means you go through like a lot of bars and stuff like that, but you don't seem to be like a drinker or party or smoker or anything like that. Is, is that the case or how does that yeah, work no, out? I, I think I've been drunk once in the last 10 years. <laughs> uh, I've never smoked weed. I've never done any kind of drugs. Um, you know, it's just not something I ever really wanted to do. Oh. And, uh, but but playing in the bars, I mean, that's just kind of where most of the music venues have been. You know, I've, I've tried to do coffee shops before, and there's one in Athens that works because they have a dedicated music room that's kind of closed off from the rest of the coffee shop. Yeah. But the other ones that I've played have been like, can you play more quietly? And you've you've heard on music, it's not it's not the death metal stuff. It's not it's not heavy. It's not even rock. It's just uh, they they are used to people doing acoustic covers, essentially something that people can still order an espresso over the top of the music if they need yeah. to. And so coffee shops didn't really work. And then the all other all edges venues and, and non-alcoholic venues, they've been, it's, un, I mean, it's, it's just part of the music industry where it's basically you're playing at bars and, and stuff like that, because it's so much of their business model is based on alcohol that it's hard to find an alternative way to do it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of live streams, there was another quote that I had read from you that was, um, or not, not live stream, sorry. Speaking of, uh, live shows, there was a quote that you had said, it was, of course, there was, a the very special open mic moment at, um, at state, at, at stadium in Ox Oxford, Ohio in the fall of 2004, after five, five weeks of being ignored and booed, I tried one last time and three people went crazy. Those three turned into 40 in a few weeks. And two months later, I was performing for 120 people in my hometown. Um, so yeah, uh, go ahead and talk about that. That's, that's phenomenal to be able to go from, like you said, three people all the way up to 120. Like that's, that's a huge jump in a short time. Yeah, and that's another one of those where um, it, it started off as kind of a negative that I turned into a positive. So I had a show booked at that same venue uh, for a Friday night, and a week before 
I, I was supposed to play, they told me they had double booked it, and the guy that was performing actually had a lot more followers than I did, so they gave it to him. And like, but just come out for an open mic sometime. And I had never been to an open mic before. This is actually how I got my open mic start. And uh, so after after a couple of weeks of being kind of like hemming and hawing and being nervous about it, I went ahead and did it. And you know, this was back before I was really playing instruments, so I just had my keyboard with the with the music that essentially had playing a little basketball, weightlifting jams, and the papa, and like two other songs that I could do. And yeah, it was just blank stares for the first four or five weeks. Almost like I didn't exist. Occasionally people would like boo me to get me off stage, but mostly it just felt like I was in the twilight zone. Like I was there, but I wasn't there. And then I decided to give it one, one more chance, which was that med, mel, medley of playing a little basketball, weightlifting jam and chilling with the papa. And as soon as I finished those three, those three did just start, the three fans started clapping really loud and told me they were going to bring more people the next week. And they did. And, you know, that that grew from there. And the other people at the open mic, one of them uh, brought this entire dorm out essentially one night. And so while they, there was a contest at the open mic, like first place would actually get a cash prize. And I never got first. But there were a couple other people there that were bringing enough people out on a Wednesday night that I still got their fans, to their, their friends and fans to be my fans. Okay. And so I think that's part of how I grew so quickly. And then, uh, you know, did that, that show that brought out 120 people in a place with a fire capacity is probably a hundred. <laughs> so it's a very tight, I had to wait for them to stop chanting the first time I played. Cause I couldn't hear myself. I couldn't hear my music. They just get yelling mission, man. And I'm like, all right, I love this. But uh, at some point, if you want to hear me play, <laughs> you want to stop, stop. That's so awesome though. It's just like, like I've been saying, just putting yourself out there just can really have a lot of return and just being relentless like you were, I think it showed, you know, it shows the return that you got from it. And uh, that's that's a really tough thing to do is to come back from everyone booing you or telling you you're bad and putting you down and stuff. Because like I've, I had that issue kind of like growing up with uh, a lot of people just being like, eh, no, you know, eh, not for you, dude, don't do it. And, um, you know, I ended up going to school for it and kind of like getting good at it i guess you could say and now a lot of the people that doubted me are like you know chewing their their words back and stuff so it's just i and you know that's, that's why i've come to really enjoy you as a person overall and everything and just your tenacity with everything and i think everyone in chat needs to learn like at least a little bit from you so <laughs> thank you yeah uh let's see if i have anything else um let's see uh, I wanted to ask you about this one right here. So you said, uh, I am a conscientious hip hop musician and, um, and have been rapping since 1992. What, uh, what is a consci, 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 I can't even say the word again. A conscious. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I, I know what conscientious is, but what is a conscientious, uh, hip hop musician? What does that entail? I think I was just going for something that showed that I was, you know, I was thoughtful um, and tried to be positive in, in my lyrics uh, trying to get, you know, just a one word quick description um, to kind of convey that. Okay. That makes sense. And then um, other than that, um, I am, I'm curious, did you ever uh, do any, <laughs> cause I, I, when I emailed you initially, I had told you what my channel was and, all of that stuff did you ever reach out or not reach out but did you ever go and look at any of my content or anything like that honestly like i i looked and saw that you you had like 267 followers or something like that and and, and saw i think i think i watched like 30 seconds of one video just to get a feel for you okay um but i you know i've been so between the the new album and actually i flew to cincinnati over the weekend uh i kind of put everything else on pause for a while oh, it probably works better if you got too far in my content you may have uh, decided not to talk with me because i can be serious but a lot of like what my content is is just kind of being a jackass and having a good time online and stuff and everyone in chat makes fun of me it's just just like it, it seems like we're all mad and angry but we're all just having a good time laughing and making fun of each other and stuff and so I didn't want you to feel like that was what we were trying to do to you or anything like that. So I'm kind of glad you didn't go on a deep dive of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, cluster, well, how goes I, it? Had there been any roasting, it might be better that I wouldn't have been prepared. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I think, like I, I've been saying all night, I think, I think you're a gem of a human being. I think there's not enough uh, people like you online anymore. And I, I, 
you know, that's about the best I can say for it all. And once again, happy birthday. If anyone has some extra cash on them, please give it, not give it, but please go purchase this man's album. Uh, it is, you, you said your 14th? Yes. So it's his 14th album. This man has 14 more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> i've got like one song written right now so it's like <laughs> um but other than that um is there anything else that you would like to cover up there's the cd itself look i'm like my head is on my shoulders here I'm lower down a little bit here. Uh, oh there right here i'll make it bigger on the screen if i can uh work with me computer reflex in there there we go whoop. Whoop. there we go Awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the the fi actual physical CD. It's got the track listing on the back and everything, but it's also on you know Spotify and Apple Music and all the streaming services. Uh, and then if you're a Bandcamp person, you can order it on Bandcamp. Uh, you can that's the way you can get the physical CD or you know downloading it as well. Okay, so the physical CD is through Bandcamp then. Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you go to missionman.net, there's you know there's an embedded link there, but it ultimately takes you to Bandcamp to buy it. Now, I, I saw a video of you saying something about the CDs and signing the inside of it and stuff like that. Do, are you doing it to all of them? Yes. So just, you know, leave a note in there that you want an autograph. You can ask for a specific message if you want to, but otherwise yeah. I'll just try, I'll just come up with something. And I intentionally left this uh, first page blank because I did that same thing on my first album, Insured on My Mind. Okay. And uh, it worked out really well. I mean, I did it at the time for cost, but <laughs> it worked out really well because anytime somebody would buy a CD, they'd be like, hey, can you put your autograph on there? Because you know, I released it before I was 18. Like I, you know, most of my friends were still in high school. The people who were buying it were buying it. Like they were high school students and just thought yeah. it was really neat that I actually put out my own CD. And so they wanted the autograph just to have it, you know. That's super awesome that you've held up for 14 albums. You still have like a remnants of like, of your very first one. It's it's still there. The, the mission man has always been there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you have a, do you have any questions or anything else? Um, I, I don't think so. I think I've, 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 we've covered, we covered a lot more than I thought we would. Most, uh, most people aren't going back to the video blog posts of mine from 10 years ago or a Facebook post from 2006 or whatever, <laughs> 2009, whatever it was. So. One of, one of my favorite things is deep dives on the internet. I think, I, I, I think those are the coolest things. That's why I made the statement that you've documented so much and it's so cool that I can, I can go back and see, be with you 10, 15 years ago and stuff. And I think it's super awesome. And I think, uh, you know, that's the real point in my opinion of what an internet deep dive is, is finding these gems that no one, no one knows about enough of, and they should. So <laughs> I agree. Um, I was, I was, Oh, there was actually, I'm sorry. There was two, like two more things I did want to cover up really quick. What music do you personally listen to in your own time? Cause like me, I listen to a lot of music, but I listen to like four bands in real life. Like I listen to a lot of just everything. Cause I do music and I have to listen to other people's music and whatnot. But overall my own like go-to when I'm at the gym, I listen to like four or five bands. It's the same, just the same groups every time. So I was curious about your taste and what you do in your personal life. But my main, my main playlist probably has about 600 songs on it. Uh, eighty percent of that is probably the '80s music that I grew up on. Um, so, like my my top five artists are Michael Jackson. Prince, sorry, let me do this in order: Prince number one, Michael Jackson number two, um, the Beastie Boys, or Talking Heads three, Beastie Boys four, and Lindsey Sterling is fifth. Lindsey Sterling is is the modern one that's in there. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Lindsey or not, but I'm not sure. She she plays violin, um, in like dance. She got started on America's Got Talent. So she plays violin while dancing. And oh, okay. I, I saw her play last summer. At one point, she was hanging upside down, spinning around in a circle while playing the violin. Okay. And it's just like, what? What? She's, <laughs> so, she's the one that made the, the violin hip-hop EDM stuff, right? Yes, that's, uh, that's how she started off. That's, that was her original brand was hip-hop violinist. Okay, yeah, um, I, do, I do remember her. Oh yeah, I'll be I'll remembers her too. Oh, St Lindsay Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> she is the only artist that I've ever covered. <laughs> there is the upside where El King sings it. She sings it well. I do not sing the song well, but Lindsay was taking submissions to be in one of her videos. So on YouTube, there is a video of me doing 
every single instrument from it, although I'm playing the violin on the keyboard. Uh, but back to, back to the other musicians, it's like Billy Joel and a bunch of other 80s stuff like Tears for Fears and stuff like that are the main ones on my playlist. And then I also listen to some independent bands, uh, sometimes because I've played with them, uh, sometimes because as I'm submitting my music to curators, I also have my own playlist has by 300 followers on it. So I do get submissions from artists wanting to put their music on my playlist and my playlist it doesn't i mean that 300 followers doesn't really mean anything it's just whether or not i'm going to listen to the song right so i've discovered some artists that way because they've just been they've put through enough effort that they've manually submitted um whether through, through sound plate or whatever submit hub whatever system they're using uh to get onto playlists the fact that they're working that hard to do it i give them a listen if I like them, I just, you know, put them on my playlist. So, like, I discovered Spark C recently, S-P-A-R-X-S-E-A. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, like I got to listen to Cassandra Kabinsky because I played with her at a show in 2006. But, you know, so mostly 80s music and then a bunch of other little things like that. Uh, okay. And then, uh, really, really, uh, really quick. Uh, for anyone in chat, um, it, we're probably going to be wrapping up here within like about five more minutes. So if you guys have any questions that you like any actual real questions, not you guys just being dickheads. If you guys have any real questions for Mission Man, please put them in now so that we can uh, we can uh, go ahead and ask him. This might I mean, I have no issue if you ever want to come back and hang out on stream with us and talk or anything. Or we also have a discord group, which uh, as well, let me throw that in the chat for everybody and for any of the new people watching. We have a Discord group. We uh, we do movie nights where, like, how you and I are talking, we'll have, like, five, six people in here and how I had the video streaming for you. One of us will do that, and we'll all just watch a movie and just talk shit about it. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, so, have you ever had, like, a rap battle or anything? Like, has anyone ever came up to you, like, at one of your shows and been like, yo, spit, like, let's go, and, like... <laughs> I've I've had a couple of situations. There was one where somebody wanted to, to battle rap me and I was like, I don't really battle rap, but we can just take turns, you know, freestyling. Yeah. And so that's just what we did. So it became like a friendly battle, I guess. Okay. Uh, and then there's one pretty funny story about a coworker of mine. Um, his name's Noah. He's actually, he's done some, he's actually been in some movies. He's in, he was in an episode of New Girl as well. Uh, but he, um, he delivered pizzas with me at the time and was like, we're, we're going to rap battle. We're going to rap battle in, in the lobby. And, and he, he won. He wasn't rhyming most of the time, but he was just vicious. Like some of the most vicious <laughs> stuff. I don't remember what he said, but it was so mean that I couldn't, I couldn't really <laughs> reply to it. it like just... He clearly won on the meanness factor, even though he wasn't <laughs> rhyming all the time. So I was just like, all right, I'm done. I'm retired. I haven't battle rap since. <laughs> uh, so from uh, from chat, we have uh, Batty, which thank you for hanging out, Batty. Is, uh, what, is, what is your favorite instrument to play? Other than singing, because um, I think that would probably be your go-to. <laughs> <laughs> that that always comes back to whatever I'm best at at the time. Okay. <laughs> so pro probably the guitar most of the time. Okay. Otherwise, the keyboard. All right. Um, what is uh, from Chef? And again, thank you for hanging out as well, Chef. What is uh, your favorite place to perform and your favorite song, as well as your favorite song to perform? Because those might be different, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm always biased towards my newer stuff. So since track nine is my favorite song on my new album, it is actually my favorite song that I've ever made. Uh, and then my favorite to perform is probably Extra. Um, because enough people know it that they get into it. And uh, they'll start doing the chorus with me and even start rapping along in the verses with me. So it's just the level of, of crowd interaction with that that makes that one my favorite to perform. Okay. And then uh, Batty also asks, uh, has he heard of yodeling? And does he like it? It's such a random one, Batty. Have you ever heard of yodeling? And do you like it? I, I was just getting ready to try to yodel, and I started doing it, and I remembered uh, <laughs> I went to a playoff game this weekend and lost the high end out of my voice. So yodeling would sound like this right now. You sound like, you sound like Shaggy, so... <laughs> We we got the new Shaggy guys. It's his channel. Let him have it. 
So um, real quick with the with the sports then, because you did mention that you went over to one of the playoff games over the weekend, right? Yes. So you're yeah. uh, good. I'm a Bengals fan. Okay. Well, I was, I, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not very big in sports other than hockey. Hockey's my go to thing. But uh, it's, it seems between playing a little a little basketball and, you know, like you, you have songs to exercise to and, and going to the game yeah. and. It seems like you and uh, making your own jersey as well or jersey style and so it seems like you have this athletic kind of passion i guess you could say is yeah yeah i, I used to uh, obviously i used to play a little basketball like i played in high school and <laughs> wanted to play in college <laughs> and, and even after college i had aspirations of playing professionally but i was never going to be i was never good enough i mean like I, I had a, a 37 inch vertical before I broke my ankle and then it dropped down to 25. So had I kept that vertical, I might've played in college. Cause I, you know, I could 360. It was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but you know, college wasn't going to happen, but, uh, it's still passionate about playing basketball. Football is actually my favorite to watch. And, uh, so I've been, you know, I've been a Bengals fan since I was a kid and they won their first playoff game in 31 years over the weekend. So that is a lot of kind of, uh, built up, uh, pressure that just got you know it exploded in the crowd and it was the loudest environment I think I've ever been in uh, oh, okay. watching that win yeah being in those types of environments uh being around people like I, I've been uh to bars before where I, I'm not even again not a big, very big like basketball fan and they were watching basketball and everyone starts cheering at one point I just wanted to be like yeah I didn't even know who the hell's playing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah when you get in that environment it's very uh I, I would I don't want to say therapeutic, but it's very um ener energetic. You feel it like inside of you and such. So yeah. I I can see that being a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and, and winning after thirty one years of not winning a playoff game, there's there's definitely catharsis there going on yeah. too. Just, just and, and the just weekend the amount of weight. Yeah, and the weekend before your birthday and your album drop and like <laughs> Yep. So um in the uh so you just to wrap back around to the album again you named the album gummy because your niece calls you gummy is there yes. a reason why she calls you gummy or is that just like you know how kids kind of come up with names sometimes so yeah i think she just started calling him calling me at one day and i don't know why i don't remember exactly how it started and she doesn't remember how it started she asked me she's like why do I call you gummy? And I'm like, I don't remember. You just started doing it and it stuck. <laughs> You're like, I don't remember, and but you better keep calling me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was probably around the same time that, uh, I think she was like six or something. She was like, you're stupid. <laughs> and my response to her, because, you know, there are so many ways you could come with a response to that, but I'm just like, thank you <laughs> so, because you don't know how to respond to thank you when somebody calls you stupid and so it just kind of <laughs> she she affectionately calls me stupid too and so you know we get these things of you know uh we talk about failing is fun that's actually our trivia name when we go out and play trivia because you know you there's a there's enough failing that you have to you have to enjoy it along the way and uh <laughs> So that whole stupid gummy thing works in with that same kind of situation. So, so is uh, album 15 going to be called Stupid with a track on there called uh, Failure is Fun? <laughs> <laughs> no, I almost did have the subtitle of this be Just the Right Amount of Stupid, though. Like We were joking about that at one point. It was going to be gummy and then Just the Right Amount of Stupid. <laughs> but it didn't ultimately come to that. There is uh, one set of videos that I did, though, where I started, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I built a marble track in my, uh, in my like, laundry room. And I would do marble races, but I would wrap the commentary. And so <laughs> that <laughs> was me going gum and tums, adventures and failing, and where, where we think failing is fun. So failing is fun at least got... It's it's little rap moment in that uh, in that commentary. That's good. We have um, <clears throat> so uh, <laughs> chef says mission man soaring over depression. <laughs> uh, DP asks, is the music arcade still a possibility at some point, or is it forever shelved? Which games would you want in the arcade? Your favorite games? So I think it's. Fairly well permanently shelved unless I somehow become independently wealthy. You know, I'd have to play the lottery to win it. 
Um, or if, you know, if enough people start listening to my music that it explodes and I have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to sink into this, uh, idea. But, um, in terms of the games themselves, I would have a street fighter two two machine. Cause that was probably the one I put the most quarters into. Uh, it'd be a whole bunch of the, you know, the eighties and nineties stuff. Um, I don't know that I would do too much of the newer stuff like you'd see at Dave and Buster's because most of that is just like quarter eating stuff. Uh, so really just, you know, nostalgic and anything from 1975 to 1995, essentially. And then uh, he also wanted to know what, what are your favorite games then? Because you, you'd already mentioned that uh, Street Fighter 2 was one of them. So, uh, yeah, arcade games, Street Fighter 2 is probably the one I played the most. And then home games, uh, my favorite video game of all time is actually Fantasy Star on the original Sega Master System. Okay. Um, it's very similar to Final Fantasy if you've played those games. Uh, but it's like Sega's version of that, essentially. It was the most impressive game I'd seen on an 8-bit machine at that point. Right. And then uh, the, the sequels are good, too. Probably not as good as the Final Fantasy sequels, but the original one is my favorite. Uh, and one other one that I will mention is Katamari Damacy, because it's one that, you know, some people know and some people don't. It was one guy made this game, and it, it, to me it's as addictive as Tetris. You basically, you're this tiny guy, and you're rolling a ball, and as you roll this ball up, you pick things up and you get bigger and bigger. So you start oh, okay. off rolling up, like, paper clips, and then eventually you're rolling up people. When you roll up the people, they start screaming. You roll up the, the buildings, you have like a thousand people screaming at once. And yeah. you, you're just rolling up all this random stuff. Yeah, and, I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I love that game. So there's actually a reference to that game in the music video for I Don't Need. I actually roll myself up with a Katamari star style bowl, or ball at one point in that video. That's, a <laughs> That's too good, man. That's uh, I wanted to ask you, well, on the subject of games, do you remember uh, the old school, uh, what was the name of it? Uh, the Simpsons. It was the, the really old, like, I want to say it was four-player Simpsons game. Yeah, the arcade cabinet where, like, Marge would actually use her hair as a weapon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, man. That is that is a flash from the past. I used to play that a lot. I loved that game. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, was, I think... I think it was calamari is what yeah i i messed up i typed it wrong guys i'm really bad i know <laughs> see i can't do well, anything without being judged by these guys <laughs> <laughs> well calamari is the much more more uh famous word one the one you're more familiar with if you don't know the game because without the game it doesn't i don't think it means anything it's k-a-t-a-m-a-r-i yeah uh, if you're if you're writing it out in kanji which i have no idea how to actually write the japanese symbols for it well let's see um i was just answering chef all right um yeah i guess i guess this is i i got a lot more out of this than i anticipated on so <laughs> as you know so did i <laughs> yeah yeah um deep yeah. any anything else anything else you're curious about or this would be the time <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think uh, I'm I'm definitely good on my end. If there, are, you know, if any qu lingering questions out there, I'm glad to answer them. But uh... yeah, all right. Last call, everybody. <laughs> Ask him to plug his <laughs> deeds. Wait, don't we already have a? I thought you made a little thing for a mission man, and then it pops up with it. Oh, oh. Um, if you can, did you already send me your Instagram? Or uh, DP, can you do me a huge favor and post his Instagram and everything else on there since you you already have all of it going? I'm like, I'm really bad with social media. Discord's like the only thing I use. I just like Facebook is just insane to go through. I sometimes like Reddit and then it immediately becomes insane to go through. And then <laughs> it's like, I have to step oh. back from social media. I'm just like, this is too much for me. <laughs> if, if, if you ever have too much of me and you want to calm down a bit, just get on Reddit. It'll bring you right back on down. <laughs> <laughs> it's, reddit is whew, reddit is a minefield sometimes like there's certain communities that i'm in that are really nice like uh there's a game i i watch or played i mean called the survivalist and the community and there's a bunch of sweethearts and stuff like that so it's it's really nice and then the moment i leave that and go to the main page it's just like i'm gonna kill you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like relentless hate and i'm just like i gotta go i can't do this like <laughs> Yeah, anytime I get, uh, I, like, I check my YouTube analytics and I see referring 
sites, and there, anytime there's a spike from an external site, it's almost always somebody like <laughs> hate posting on Reddit one of my videos, like. Check this out. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. Well, he topped himself with this one. This one's even worse. And it's like, all right, you're driving me traffic. I'm cool with it. Yeah, for real. And I think one of the funniest things, too, is, is if that person that, like you said, he's one, giving you free promotion. And then two, if that person spent half as much time like doing it himself, he might actually be decent at it instead of like trying to insult you and bring you down. And that's it's just it's so crazy that these people's like mind frame online and how they how they think like that well well fuck this guy i'm just gonna talk shit about him really quick and then they sit there and don't do anything <laughs> it's like well like i don't know yeah that's that's, that's that's one of those big mysteries for me is i mean like some people i think it's just they've been told though by somebody so often that it's just a natural like if they don't think they can do it because they've been told by somebody else they're going to pass that same kind of message on to somebody else and yeah that's that's a cycle that obviously has to stop somewhere somebody has to start telling them yes so they start believing in themselves and then pass that on to you know having a positive attitude about other people and then sometimes people just like being negative um it's it's fun to troll you know yeah. uh, <laughs> i mean I, i've been a negative person before in my life but never in the sense that i like wanted to like completely just demoralize a human being i guess in that sense like it, it's one thing to pull up videos and have some laughs with your friends and stuff like that and it's like another thing to try and reach out to as many other people you don't know and like make fun of them it's just like what are you garnishing uh, when I, when I saw Twilight and saw the guy's shirt come off and, and, and he started glittering in the sun, I, I, you know, I definitely made fun of that on my own, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get on Twilight's, you know, Facebook page and be like, why'd you do this? Why, why not, would you guys not, want? <laughs> not going to publicly mock the creator, you know, who, who made, who actually put some effort into this. And, and it's just, it's just not the right to me has never been the right thing to do and i'm not sure why people feel so empowered to do it but you know from my perspective i just it's just something i deal with and just brush it off and uh and i think yeah i think that's actually probably the best spot right here i mean i think that's that kind of sums up a lot of it and why how i found you why i love you and why i love your material uh every time i every time i hear your music it puts a smile on my face and um i i hope for chad i hope that his music does the same for you I hope that you guys take the time to actually go and listen to his music and go and show him some love, especially today on his birthday. But in general, keep showing him some love. Keep going in his YouTube, checking him out, keeping keeping tabs on him and stuff, because this man documents a lot of the stuff he does, and he's got a very interesting story. And if you guys take some time and listen, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised as much as I have been. So um, with that said, this is Mission Man. I'm going to get and uh, one last, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not important. Don't worry about me. So. <laughs> and uh, one one last thing is, <laughs> uh, let me let me do the. Uh... <laughs> and then um, <laughs> just wiping the confetti out of my hair. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, gotta get it out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and just, just the nice things before we, um, before we head off, uh, just the nice things that everyone is saying right now. Uh, DP Dish says, I'm glad to see the hate rolls right off of you. You're a treasure. Uh, Chef says, this man makes me feel good. Uh, Abby agrees with him. And let's see. DP Dish says, having the ability to positively influence the moods of those around you is such a powerful thing. Uh, and then just a, a string of happy birthdays and hearts and everything else. So. Once again, thank you so much for showing up and in and, and, and like a week's notice and not even knowing any of my stuff and any of that. I, I appreciate you taking the time and coming out and talking with me. And uh, again, you're a total gem. Everybody go show this man some sport. I'm about to personally, once I hop off, I'm about to personally go purchase his uh, physical disc copy because this man's going to sign it for me. And uh, I'm going to. I'm going to leave a note to tell him what to sign for me. <laughs> and then, as well, I will be purchasing a shirt as well to show some support because I do like the design on the, uh, the, 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 what should I call it? The tank top one. I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and leave it out, everybody. <laughs> Just one more clapping. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you all so much for showing up. I will be doing uh, probably a couple more streams this week uh, or maybe one more before Saturday. Saturday will be Screaming Saturdays. Um, you should stop by as well, Mission Man. We'd love to see you there at, uh, you know, Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Shaggy Shed. You guys can also find me on YouTube at Shaggy Shed. And I will also be uh, uploading this video chopped up. And I will also be giving this video over to him. And he will be putting his version on his channel. So everybody... Please go and support this man. He's a wonderful human being, and the world doesn't deserve such wholesomeness. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you all so much for showing up. Have a great rest of your night. Bye-bye